have one question. My name is Chrissy. Um, you came here from your hometown. We have city officials that live right here in Springfield and have not set up a meeting like this for Springfield. You said your tickets were free, right? Yes, they are. We're not making okay. money tonight. Okay, listen to me. But why can't the city officials, I, I'm serious, why can't the city officials do this? Go to the north, south, east, and west of Springfield, maybe get people that want to come, and find out what they're really living circumstances. And here's why. We're paying for those, right? I've been in Springfield for 66 years. <laughs> I know a lot about Springfield, okay? So my, my take is, if you don't talk to people, even Haitians, I have Haitian friends too. I know all of them are over here illegal too. But, but what I'm saying is, this is a community. If you want to be open about things, talk to the people. Vivek Ramaswamy just got done having a town hall meeting in Springfield, Ohio, where he was taking questions from people who actually live there. And it's crazy. My mind is blown because the mainstream media told us that nothing was happening in Springfield, Ohio at all. The good folks over at ABC News, the totally trustable people over at ABC News, they told us that this was a big conspiracy. Yet once again, the people of Springfield, Ohio have spoken out and they've acknowledged that this problem is very, very real. That they do have a problem with this influx of Haitian immigrants in Springfield, Ohio. In fact, one woman was there speaking out. I'm sure we'll go over plenty of clips from this little town hall meeting in the future. But one woman was speaking out about how her daughter was chased by immigrants that were wielding machetes and she was chased. Let's go ahead and listen to the clip and then I'll be right back with more. So I have a young daughter, I have two daughters actually, sure. and one of my daughter is um, younger. Um, so I wanna talk about the crime a little bit. Sure. Pers personal, personal crime. So she's been followed around Walmart, she's been stalked, she ran to her car, threw her stuff down, ran to her car, she was chased, okay? They were immigrants. Uh, she was chased by a man with a machete on her way to work. Called the police. She told them what had happened and wanted to file a report. Two hours later, the police still had not called her back and never checked on the crime. So that's how you know there's no crime in Springfield because no one's reporting it. That was your... That was your daughter. Isn't it crazy how the mainstream media folks, they haven't changed their tune. They're still trying to convince America that nothing's happening in Springfield. But isn't it crazy how I can sit here every single day for over a week now and I can show you video after video after video of people who actually live there speaking out and if the town hall meetings and the city commission meetings weren't enough, now we have this town hall that was live streamed on social media. It was live streamed on YouTube. I believe it was live streamed on some mainstream media outlets. And undeniably, once again, the people of Springfield, Ohio have spoken out and they say that they are experiencing problems in their community. And the mainstream media wants to make this all about race, but it's really not. Yeah, when we're discussing the problems in Springfield, Ohio, it's mainly Haitian immigrants that are in that town. But I mean, there's people from all over the place that are flooding into America. And there's problems happening in all types of communities and places where you would least expect it all over America as we speak. It's not just Haitian immigrants. It's immigrants from all types of different countries, many of which have no business being here. And when you have a area with 50,000 people living there and you drop 20,000 people from a different country off out of nowhere that don't speak the language, they don't know the rules, they don't know the laws, they come from a completely different culture, you know, there's going to be issues. And I think most people understand 
that people want a better life for themselves. If we were in a certain situation and we had an opportunity to go somewhere that will, that where, where our families would be better off, we would do the same. But a community can't sustain 20,000 immigrants being dropped off. And they keep making the argument, oh, these aren't illegal immigrants. They're here legally. Yeah, because they've been given uh, asylum or they've been given protection or what have you. That doesn't make a difference, folks. It really doesn't make a difference. It's not like these were a bunch of Haitian immigrants that were just all around America, just patiently waiting. They've been living here for years and then they all decide to go to Springfield, Ohio. That's not how this works. They took some people from a war-torn country. Mind you, a lot of the problems happening in Haiti are because of the US government. People like Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton, we'll get into that in the future. But you take people from this war-torn environment you give them temporary protection status, so technically they're legal, and then you drop them off in a place like Springfield, Ohio. That's basically how this goes. They didn't, you know, go through the usual process that you would go through to become a legal citizen of America. Like, if you had a girlfriend in another country, you would have a tough time bringing her to America, a way tougher time than, you know, the what these people have to deal with coming over here, basically. But as I was explaining in a past video, but as I was explaining in a previous video, the mainstream media trying to paint this whole situation out to be a big conspiracy has really backfired on them because now people have a magnifying glass on Springfield, Ohio, but not just Springfield. People have a magnifying glass on their own communities and people are realizing that not only were they blatantly lied to about Springfield, but situations like what's happening in Springfield, they're happening all over America. They're happening in people's communities and they didn't even know it. And, you know, this conversation is going to keep going because the people of Springfield are going to continue speaking out and people like me are going to continue giving them a platform so their voices can be heard. But what we need from you all is we need you all to share these videos. We need you to hit the like button, comment, get the story out there because we're working against the mainstream media on this one. And I think we've heard enough from the people of Springfield to know that this is a real problem. And if you're someone who's still siding with the mainstream media, then I don't know what to tell you other than you're a bootlicker. You know what I mean? Like you're, you're siding with the man as opposed to the people. You're siding with the machine as opposed to the people. And I'll listen to the people who live there over some random ABC News reporter any day of the week. But for now, let me know your thoughts about this down in the comments below. While you're down there, hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe, ring that notification bell, and I'll talk to you all very soon in the next one.